Hello and welcome to another video related to 3D printers. This time I'm going to address a topic that is discussed very widely in different forums on the web. However, there is no good current information and there is a lot of arguments which are not substantiated well. It is about whether the Marlin or the Repetier firmware is better for Delta style 3D printers. Traditionally it was believed that Repetier is better because it had lower CPU load and therefore could print smoother on Delta geometries which require more calculations to convert XYZ coordinates into the movements of the three towers. However, in the last year Marlin has released a new version 1.1 which has major developments regarding working with Delta printers and today I'm going to test my Anycubic Cosel printer which is still a great printer one year later uh, with my default Marlin uh, 92.9 firmware I believe and the latest I'm sorry, my default uh, Repetier firmware 92.9 which I have used for almost one year and Marlin version 1.1.6 which is the latest uh, GitHub version which I adjusted for using with uh, any cubic cosel. You can find links in the description um, to both firmwares if you want to try them yourself. Uh, I'm going to print a short test model first with the Repetier firmware and then with Marlin. We'll compare the quality and then perhaps we'll do some more tests. Uh, so I'll get rid of this benchy here and let's start. I'm going to time both uh, prints from the moment when the head has heated up and starts moving towards the surface. You can see the display, you can see the timer here and you'll be able to see the print progressing. Once this starts, I'll switch to time-lapse mode in order not to bother you with watching the whole print go. So, this is set for 220 degrees. It is a PLA filament. And the first print with the Repetier firmware. I'm printing from SD card in order to avoid any effects of running the G code from a PC. And uh, both firmwares will print exactly the same G code from the SD card. So I will time how long it will take for both of them to uh, print and uh, later on I will compare both models regarding the quality. While it's printing you will also be able to listen to how the stepper motors work since uh, with the old versions of Marlin it was um, widely reported that the printer doesn't sound good in the sense the, the movement is jittery and the steppers sound uh, bad which is basically an indication of uh, too many steps per second or segments per second so here this one started it's a nice and simple test model which should print easily and uh, should not take a lot of time. However, it has many different features which should be able to demonstrate the uh, different types of movement. It is about uh, 60 millimeters by 25 millimeters, 65 millimeters wide by 25 millimeters deep by around 7 millimeters high. It has overhangs, it has thin walls, it has a little bit of infill which I have set to hexagonal infill. And uh, the model is sliced with slicer, uh, 
latest version uh, built from uh, uh, November 11th, I believe. So, uh, I will not change anything in the physical configuration of the printer between the two prints. As soon as the Reptier firmware print finishes, I will stop it. I will reflash the printer with the Marlin and I will start the printer and I will start the print again. There will be no changes um, to the physical configuration of the printer. Regarding the software configuration, I have configured my Marlin to match the settings of my Repetier as good as I could. And, uh, I think uh, they should mostly uh, be the same. Um, so any differences that we'll see will be up to uh, the planner in the two firmwares and the, when they're, and the way they're implemented regarding CPU loads. So I will switch to time-lapse mode. You can watch this print and then I will show you the Marlin print. So 97% done, 98, 14, 14 minutes so far, and it's finished, 14.48 minutes. Mm, I will now flash Marlin and reprint this, but let's first see how this came out. I will remove it and show you you can see some of the features of this model it has an overhang uh, a bridge right here and a pretty bad overhang with some very thin edges as soon as I remove it from the build plate I will show you in more detail Okay, so here is the model. It comes from a um, GitHub repository from six years ago for a printer which was called SFACT. I don't know if anything came out of the printer, but their test models are pretty nice. So here is the model up close. You can see it has an overhang, a uh, bridge, sorry, it has an extremely thin overhang here. I will zoom in so you can see better. So, an extremely thin overhang on this side, which is a whole edge. And it printed pretty well. This is a very, very um, hard model. 
both for the slicer and for the printer. It tests many things. Overhangs here which practically go to horizontal. Look at this overhang which narrows down to a point right here. It's very thin and it printed pretty well. There is some small lettering here, a feature with a fixed diameter, outside diameter, two small inside diameters, a hexagonal hole here, curved edges and all this bridging. I don't know if the slicer sliced it badly or I have a under extrusion problem but these perimeters here don't stick too well to the infill. We'll see whether this will be different with the Marlin. I will not re-slice this model, I will print exactly the same G-code. And I want to show you another thing here. Look at this. The overhang is so thin that it's practically transparent. Nevertheless, it printed. You can see the light shining through there. It printed pretty well. So I'm happy with the result from the Repetier. This was at uh, 60 millimeters per second for the uh, perimeters, 15 millimeters per second for the small perimeters like these holes, external perimeters are at 50%, infill at 80 millimeters per second, solid infill at 40 millimeters per second. Top solid in fuel at 15 millimeters per second, uh, gaps at 20 and bridges at 60 millimeters per second. Uh, no support material, obviously. And uh, this is a pretty conservative speed. These are pretty conservative speed settings for this printer. It can print much faster, but I decided I will start with mm, without pushing. The firmwares and if they both uh, perform equally well on this object then I will try to print at higher speeds again slice the model and print the same g-code with both versions so very good performance from the repetier I will now reflash the firmware to the Marlin 1.1.6 and print it again and the time print time 14 minutes 48 seconds so I've uploaded the Marlin firmware here it is Marlin 1.6.6 and the first thing I want to show you is the homing command listen to the sound the arms make while moving. And I'm going to home it one more time. One more time. This is significantly different sound of the stepper motors and then the sound the um, repetier makes. So now I'll try to print.
again I will start the timer when the target temperature is reached and it starts printing the head is waiting just outside of the range there right now as you can see and um, also pay attention to the sound when to the sound when it starts printing again the G code is exactly the same as the one you saw the repetitor from our printing a few minutes ago 106 degrees obviously the user interface is Marlin And in the meantime, I will focus on the area which you will be looking at while printing. On 83, the G code is uh, sliced to print it to 120 degrees. That's how this particular filament sticks the best to the build platform. And I'm using just glue stick. Two twenty one and we start it. Can compare the sound of both printers. Um, if you want, you can go back in the video and uh, listen to the repetitor printing again. I'm very used to the sound that the printer makes because I've used it with the same firmware for one year, and this is noticeably different whether better or worse, or whether it makes no difference at all we will see it's hard to judge at this point so I will let it print the first few layers in real time as you watch and then I will switch to time lapse again so that you don't have to sit through the whole print Sounds like the jerk settings are significantly more aggressive on this one, but I tried to make them the same. In fact, one of the few things which start to wear out on this printer are the bow joints of the arms. Some of them have a little bit of play now. And when printing, for example, the hexagonal infill, uh, you can see, you can hear this vibration. It doesn't affect the print quality yet, but I plan to replace these arms with uh, magnetic bow joint arms. But this is a topic for another video. So uh, I will switch to time lapse now for the rest of this print. So, I just realized as this was printing that my Marlin configuration doesn't control the, ex um, the head cooling fan, which is bad. Luckily, in this print, it is unlikely to jam 
but I need to fix this. I remember that when I configured the repetier firmware, I had to especially define a pin for controlling the head pulling fan. So I'll have to find the corresponding setting in Marlin and do it as well. Uh, the part pulling fan is running on the other side of the head, so the print quality should not be affected. Um, Marlin seems to be doing faster than Repetier until this point, which means that I will have to check the acceleration and jerk, jerk set settings. It's possible that I have differences in the configuration. I will let you watch it until it finishes and then we'll compare the both prints. Listen to the head rising. It's definitely a different sound. The homing algorithm is also a little bit different. The three axes home one by one and in um, Repetier they do it simultaneously. I don't think this makes any difference whatsoever. So, let's see. There's Marlin. And here is the part printed. Ah, I forgot to stop the clock, but I guess it will be visible on the video. Around 10 minutes. So this is 4 minutes faster than the Repetier firmware. Probably due to Mm, more aggressive jerk settings. I'll zoom in and focus. So that we can compare these two. Marlin on the left, Repetier on the right. The first thing that is obvious, you can see it immediately, is the vibrations here on this surface after it takes the corner. You can see this oscillation which is almost missing on the Repetier. So this is indication of, again, probably too high uh, acceleration or jerk settings. Uh, let's see what else. The surface quality here on this um, half cylinder is much better on the Repetier compared to Marlin. You can see this wiggling as well. So the, the, the head is coming from here, making a turn and oscillating. While here there is no such effect. Again, most probably jerk settings. Mm. The text very similar. Surface quality on the top surfaces comparable. There is significantly more delamination between the perimeters and the top in fuel in Marlin compared to Repetier. Hard to say what the reason is. The bridging. I don't know how well you can see it. Repetier on the top, Marlin on the bottom. Repetier Repetier did noticeably better. There is less sagging on some of these strands compared to the um, on the Repetier compared to Marlin. But I, I, until I configure both to take roughly the same time while printing, it would be probably not a fair comparison. Mm. 
the small tiny edge here is very comparable the progressive overhang I don't know how to hold it so you can see it well seems to be very similarly executed on both parts so this is good and what else other sharp corners let's see mm, yes pretty pretty obvious here uh, depends on the lightning well. sorry yeah, see how here the surface is smoother than here as the printer takes the corner and I presume it will be visible somewhere else as well but I cannot find a good example anyway the, the best the most visible example is here if I make the lightning lighting from the side you can see it very clearly this is the marlin which coming from here makes a turn and this oscillation which continues you can see it all the way up to here while well, Repetir has one small oscillation and then smooth but again this print took 10 minutes this took 14 so we have to compare the acceleration on both printer um, both uh, firmwares so what kind of conclusion can I draw so far when controlling the motors at high speed Marlin is noisier for sure the sound is has a strange vibration to it this is most visible when homing the head um, which is missing in Repetier and the sound there is pretty smooth and uh, nice obviously higher acceleration settings in Marlin which doesn't allow for a good comparison at this point and uh, apart from that it seems that uh, the segments per second which is 200 on both firmwares right now is handled just fine by both Repetier and Marlin at this printing speed it would be an interesting next experiment to try faster print speeds until either the quality uh, becomes too bad or the um, one of the firmware resets or hangs so I will stop from for now play with the configurations and uh, after that we will maybe do another print on Marlin so here is the Repetier firmware printing a different model right now uh, just as a sample of the sound of the stepper motors significantly softer and smoother sound let this print and then resume testing the different options in Marlin so the topic of Marlin versus Repetier discussed endlessly in the forums and never really resolved to my satisfaction the Anycubic Coso Delta printer upgraded now with magnetic bolt joints which are working pretty nicely extremely easy to disconnect and connect and zero backlash right now I have Repetier flashed in the 
printer and I'll show you a little bit of G code that I have created. Perhaps I'll zoom in a bit so that uh, you can see the G code. So the G, what the G code does is it homes the printer, then these are commented out, and then what it does is it moves to uh, Z position of 100 millimeters above the bed, just so the head doesn't hit the bed, and then moves to X and Y with a feed rate of 5000. And you see that X0, Y70 means we are moving in a triangle inscribed in a 140 millimeter circle. So it does this triangle motion twice with a feed rate of 5000, then with a feed rate of 6000, 7000, 8000, 9000, 10, 11, 12, 13, and so on. 19 all the way to 20,000, then 25,000, and 30,000. This G code is intended to was intended to test my magnetic ball joints and see what kind of accelerations they can survive while um, while still not disconnecting. So now I'll run this code on the Repetier firmware and I'll let you see what it looks like. And just to make this more interesting, I run it from Repetier host. Uh, I'll have a timer so that we can time how long does Repetier take to execute this G code. Here is the timer. The first command homes the printer, which I'm not going to time. I will start timing as soon as the printer uh, starts moving down. And you see that I have a soft thing on my glass, since I don't want it to break if the, be uh, the head disconnects. So I say print, and as soon as the head finishes homing and starts moving down, I'll start the timer. So you can see it's moving fairly slowly in the beginning. And it speeds up every other time when, when it finishes the triangle, listen to the sound. On the screen you can also see the estimated time. Right here. So, 118 seconds to finish this test in Repetier. Let's do the same for Marlin. I have Marlin 1.1.8, which is the latest possible Marlin version configured for the Anycubic. Now it has the um, head fan, the extruder cooling fan uh, configured as well. So I'll start the upload to the board. Of 
course I need to disconnect from Repetier Host for this to work. It's compiling. And it will, it will upload the sketch to the controller. Pay attention how the screen will change to Marlin in a few seconds. So it's uploading. Again, 118 seconds for Repetier firmware to finish this test. I reset the timer. And the Arduino is almost finished uploading the firmware. Watch the screen. And there it is, Marlin 1.1.8. Go back to Repetier host and start the test. I just say connect. And again, I will start the timer when the homing is finished and the head starts moving now. And now watch. The sound is different. I'm not sure if this will be nicely possible to hear in the video, but there is a noticeable higher vibration in Marlin when doing this test. See what happened there? The vibration was so high that one of the arms from the head disconnected. Now the nice thing is these are magnetic ball joints so what I'll just disconnect them all and let the test run without the head connected at all. Doesn't need to be connected in order to uh, time the test. So I'll just disconnect all of them and leave the head just lying here without being connected to the uh, carriages. Doesn't change anything about the way the test runs. So let's reset the timer and start the print again. Interesting phantom printer. <laughs> listen to the noise the stepper motors are making. Stuttering the dum dum. 
127 seconds so as you remember it took Repetier to finish this in 118 seconds without actually being so jerky as to disconnect the magnetic bow joints so in, in my opinion this makes uh, Repetier a clear winner in this test so I connect the <laughs> I'll connect the rods again and I'll show you something else in Repetier. And magnetic ball joints are truly nice. It's really really trivial and easy to connect and disconnect your effector. It's beautiful. So I'll flash back Repetier. Here is my Repetier. Close the Arduino with the open the Repetier firmware, compile it and flash it. First, disconnect from RepRap, uh, sorry, from Repetier host. And while this is flashing, I'll show you that here in the beginning of this test, I have a few of these triangles which are drawn at feed rates of 55,000 and 65,000 and then 65,000 going to Z260 and then Z100 260, 100 which means the head will be going up and down, up and down and it first will make two triangles with a feed rate of 55,000 and 65,000 just to reiterate, in the test we finished now, the fastest feed rate I had was 30,000. So, I'll reload this file into Repetier host. As you see, it's called speedtest.gcode. Repetier is on the screen, it's ready. I don't think there is a point of timing it, but just watch what this will do. Or maybe we can time it to have a second data point. But pay attention that this test will have extra three triangles, uh, two triangles, I'm sorry, four triangles and a few moves up and down in the beginning. So as usual, I'll say print and start the timer when the homing is there finished. This was the really, really fast test I was talking about. And listen now. I think there is no question, at least in my mind, as to which firmware has smoother motion for Delta printers. And this is easily obvious by the magnetic bolt joints detaching when the Marlin is running this test. In fact, both firmwares are configured with 200 segments per second, which is an important uh, parameter for Delta printers since the uh, conversion from Cartesian coordinates to Delta tower coordinates is a fairly heavy calculation. The firmwares, if they're not well optimized, get overloaded if you configure too many steps per second. And I've configured both of them to do 200 steps per second. As you see, 
uh, Repetier finished it in 126 seconds, but this is with the extra speedy test in the beginning. I'll run it one more time, just the beginning of the test, for you to see the speed that this gets and how smooth the motion is. I think that's enough. So, bottom line, from this test, in my opinion, Repetier is still better than Marlin, even Marlin 1.1.8, which just came out in the end of January for Delta printers. Thanks, thanks, thanks for watching, and if you're curious of how these magnetic bow joints were added to the any cubic cosel. Watch my other video, which has a full description and links to the materials. In the description of this video, you can find links to my GitHub uh, repositories for both Repetier and Marlin, so you can run your own tests or use them just for day-to-day -day printing. Thank you and have a good day.